Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today's video is a little different as Thursday evening, I issued a craft my stash challenge to my viewers. Those who participated in the next 24 hours commented the top three items in my craft stash that I had showed that they wanted to see me create one project out of. I gotta say, it was a little tough, but there were definitely um, some trends, some items that a lot of you wanted me to see. Congratulations to the two people whose comments I chose randomly with Random Comment Picker. And you'll see your names at the beginning of each of my projects. So you'll notice that I didn't have a thumbnail picture showing my finished products because I want it to be a surprise. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. My first stash challenge came from Deborah Pierce. Congratulations, Deborah. She wants me to use the bicycle wheel, the cutting board, and the tall tag sign. I'm going to use these items to make this project along with some tumbling tower blocks and some poster board. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the hanger from my tag. And instead of using the whole thing, I'm actually going to cut out that middle section. So using a straight edge and my uh, craft knife there, I did have to go into that um, little crack there on the front of the tag a few times to be able to separate the two angled side pieces from the center piece. So a box cutter might have been better. I think I did switch to that at one point. But once I got it to the point where I could bend it, I just on the back went ahead and went across that crease with my knife. So once I trimmed up the edges a little bit, I'm going to take off the other slanted side with the same technique. Once I had that center section cut out, I decided I needed to trim it a little bit smaller because I wanted it to be the width of a tumbling tower block. So here you can see I've just made two little notches and then just one more time with my straight edge, this time with a box cutter, I'm gonna trim down that piece of MDF or whatever this is one more time to make it, like I said, the width of the tumbling tower blocks. Then taking, I think it was about 22 of these tumbling tower blocks, I am hot gluing them, stacking them along the printed side of this piece of tag all the way up to the top. Once I have the piece of tag completely covered with the tumbling tower blocks, I'm going to give this whole thing a coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Actually, I don't think I painted the backside. I just left it the plain uh, tan because that's going to be uh, facing the back. So this is going to end up being a stand for part of our project. I'm kind of excited that you don't know what I'm making until you actually see it revealed here. All right, now I'm taking some poster board. Um, actually, this is like a piece of one of those science fair presentation boards. And I'm tracing around one of the little triangle sections of the bicycle wheel. And then I'm going to extend that up a little further to the straight edge. Once I have my triangle traced out, I'm going to use my Fiskars fingertip knife to cut that out from the poster board. And then I'm actually going to end up making six of these triangles. Thank you. 
Now that I have my six triangles cut out, I'm going to do my best to make them look like metal. I'm gonna use three different shades of gray Waverly chalk paint. First of all, I'm gonna give all six of my triangles two coats of Waverly chalk paint in this light gray color called Mineral. So I am brushing it on. This is a little bit of a slick surface, this yellow uh, presentation board. So I did go ahead and do two coats and then I'm also going to paint one of these wood circles. This is from Walmart in their craft section. I think you get like six in a package for under $2. So once I have my mineral was dry, I'm gonna now take Elephant, which is the dark gray, and this foam sprouncing brush, and I'm just doing dabbing light circles all over and this is really just kind of where you get to play and um, just do this however you want. I'm overlapping these shades to then um, make this look like hammered metal. After the dark gray called Elephant, I'm gonna come back in with this color called Silver Lining. And again, just adding another layer to our cardboard triangles. And then um, once we get the silver lining, I believe I'm gonna come back in with Elephant one more time. Next, my idea is to take a screw and this little plastic spacer, and I'm going to attach the bicycle wheel to the top of my little um, stand here that we made out of the tag sign and the tumbling tower blocks, just using my drill, screwing in that screw, trying to make sure I don't go all the way through the back, um, doing a little bit at a time. I want this to still be able to turn, but I don't want it super loose. This is good how I have it here. Um, the back of the screw did kind of come through, so I just had this little black cap um, that I'm just gonna hot glue it over the pointy end of the screw there. And then we have that in place. Now I am coming back to my triangles again, like I said, coming back with the elephant lightly, just adding one more layer this is one of those things that um, is definitely your preference. Just keep playing with it until you get it how you want it to look. And I will also do the same to the wood circle. Once my triangles were dry, I did cut about half an inch off the pointy tip of each of my triangles, just lining them up here to get them all even and then we're going to attach them to every other space of our bicycle wheel. So I did cut them a little bit larger than each of the triangle sections, running a bead of hot glue down each of the angled sides. I'm then going to glue it to the pieces of metal that are on the wheel. You can see why I cut off the tips of each of the triangles because otherwise they would all be overlapping there and wouldn't lay flat. So this way I'm getting them all to meet in the center, but they're not actually touching each other or overlapping at all. So keep doing that until you have all six. Then I did flip it over just to add some more stability, running hot glue along those same long edges and also across that piece, that rounded piece of the circle that goes behind each of the cardboard triangles. Now to get the bamboo cutting board in here, we are going to make a base for our windmill. I'm gonna take four more tumbling tower blocks and glue them together in sets of two. These are going to give some stability to the base of our windmill stand so that um, it stands up straight and doesn't fall forward or backwards. Next on our windmill, I'm gonna glue that circle on just to cover up that center point. You don't have to do this. I think it looks cute without it, but I went ahead and covered that up as well. Now we're going to put our windmill on our stand. So I'm going to center it and then use a little bit of hot glue here underneath to first of all, attach the stand we made 
to the center of the bamboo cutting board. Then we're gonna take our sets of two tumbling tower blocks, glue one of them to the front, and then one of them to the back, and this will allow our windmill to stand up straight. This would definitely be an optional step, but I thought the um, little blades of the windmill looked a little plain, so I decided to add some whimsical little doodles, um, squiggly line and dots to outline the circle and then each of the six blades. I just did this with a Sharpie marker. Once that was done, I felt like it was just missing a little extra something. So I'm taking my thicker jute twine from Walmart and hot gluing the end to the back of my um, blade there. I'm going to wrap the exposed sections of the bicycle wheel wreath form with the jute twine. I'm just wrapping it around real tight and then you'll see here when I get to the end of this section, rather than cutting the jute twine and starting over, I'm just going to put some hot glue on this um, piece of the blade behind it, you'll see here. Put a little dot there, a little dot there, and then I'm just going to stretch the jute twine across the back of that blade and then continue wrapping. So there you can see it wrapped all the way around and a little wood plug I added to the center, the blades of our windmill, the stand, the bamboo cutting board. I have not made a windmill before and I was super happy that this challenge gave me the opportunity. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And if you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for your ongoing support of my channel. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content and it will help my channel to grow. My second stash challenge project is thanks to Kitty Jones Clark. You'll see a theme here. She also wanted me to use the bicycle wheel and the cutting board and also that plastic terrarium. I'm also going to use a set of three of the mini terracotta pots from Dollar Tree as well for this project. The first thing I'm going to do is paint all three of my mini pots and my hanging terrarium planter with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I only needed one coat for the terracotta pots. For the um, plastic terrarium planter, I did paint two coats and I didn't worry about painting the flat bottom because we're going to be gluing that to the bamboo cutting board. So giving that two coats and then I did spray this planter once I had the two coats of paint dry, I did spray it with a matte clear spray so that the paint wouldn't scratch off. Next, taking a bunch of hot glue, I'm going to put that on the flat bottom part of our terrarium planter, and I'm gonna glue that down to the center of this bamboo cutting board. This is going to be the base for our second project, and I'm just holding that in place until it's nice and secure. Now, I use quite a few zip ties from Dollar Tree in this project. My idea was one that I had seen before, I don't know if it was Hobby Lobby or somewhere had this wheel 
that had, it looked kind of like a Ferris wheel, but it had these pots attached to it. Now, I don't own any fancy tools or welding machinery, so I wanted to figure out how I could do this same idea with zip ties. So I have to zip tie kind of around the bottom part of the pot, but I did manage to get all three of the pots zip tied to the bicycle wheel wreath frame. You'll see here in a second that we will secure that with hot glue and with some cardstock, kind of like a Band-Aid. But um, this did take a little bit of finagling, but I was really, really happy with how it all turned out. So here, once I had the zip tie where I wanted it and as tight as I could get it, I flipped over the wreath and I'm just putting hot glue all over the zip tie and the metal piece that goes behind the pot. And we'll get that until it's dry and then we will attach our third pot down here at the bottom in the same way, getting it secured around the bottom about half inch or so of the pot and then we'll secure it on the back with hot glue. Now to keep the pot from still breaking away from that hot glue, I took a piece of cardstock and I cut three rectangles like this. I'm gonna kind of put them, um, attach them to the pot over the piece of metal um, wreath frame, kind of like a Band-Aid to help keep the two together. And it just kind of blends in with the white of the pot as well. So I'm gonna do that to all three of the pots and then they'll be nice and secure. Now I didn't like that you could see the zip ties so I took some of this burlap trim from Dollar Tree and I'm just hot gluing a piece of it at the base of the pot to cover up the zip ties. Now that we have the three mini pots secured to the bicycle wheel, probably the hardest part of this was zip tying this bicycle wheel to the top of the uh, terrarium planter. I'm gonna use, gosh, I think I used maybe four or five zip ties to do this, which is really hard to do with one hand while you're holding the frame on. But one, I just went around the um, spoke there of the frame and around the base of the little hanging loop that's on top of the planter. Then I'm gonna go around um, one side of the loop and the center spoke. I'm gonna do that once on the right hand side of the hanging loop and once on the left hand side. Okay, I guess I only used three zip ties for that part. Then taking jute twine, I tied it around the base and then I'm just wrapping it using a little hot glue as needed to cover up the zip ties where the um, wreath is attached to the terrarium planter and just kind of trying to clean this up and make it look a little nicer.
The last step then is just to fill your little pots. I decided to do the mini fake succulents from Dollar Tree. Just put some hot glue down there to stick those in. And then to the actual planter down here, I'm gonna add some of these lamb's ear leaves. I have some other of these longer um, succulents. I thought about putting that purple one in there, but I felt like it was a little too big. So I'm actually gonna put that one on top of the planter and um, put this in, not in the center hole. I, I mm, Nah, let's just put it down here on top of the planter. I am going to put though another one of those little wooden plugs like I used on the windmill to the center of this wheel. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Again, it was a bit of a construction challenge, but I really love how both of these projects turned out. I'd love to know what you think. Thanks again so much for joining me today for this Craft My Stash Challenge video. Let me know in the comments, sure, which of the projects was your favorite, but maybe what you would have done with those three items. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.